Very excited to welcome back to the program once again, the co-founder and executive director of the Sunrise Movement, Varshan Prakash, welcome back to the show. Hey, John, thank you for having me. Uh, always glad to have you here for all of the reasons that I just listed in that intro. But today we have a special reason. You're here because this book is available today, Winning the That's Green the New one. Deal. <laughs> Why we must, how we can. I just got my copy yesterday, so I'm very excited. And it's available so people can get their copies. And so I, I, wanna, I wanna jump into this. It's a pandemic. Now I assume you started working on the book before <laughs> that, but this is, a, this is a difficult time to really accomplish much of anything. And yeah. you already had a lot on your plate. So tell me about the, the, the making the decision to write this book with, with so many other awesome activists and writers and thinkers and policymakers. Yeah, well, the decision to write this book, or at least, you know, it being a labor of love with many people who contributed to it, what happened far before we had any idea of what the year 2020 would be like. Um, but we are thrilled to present it to the world regardless. It launches today um, and it's filled with essays by some of the, I would say, greatest minds of the decade on this subject, right? Many of the people who um, uh, you've also talked to, John, um, we have folks like Naomi Klein and Rihanna Gunn Wright, who writes this awesome policy section on the Green New Deal, um, Reverend Willie Barber, um, Alex Rojas, and Walid Shahid from. Justice Democrats, um, it, it kind of goes through the roadmap of, you know, how did we get to the problems that we have today? And we have people like uh, Kate Aronoff and David Wallace Wells kind of talk us through that piece of it. And then we talk a lot about, you know, what is the theory of change and, and how do we actually build the people power and political power and shift the entire context that we are organizing in the, in the United States and beyond uh, to pass a Green New Deal. So we really see it as kind of um, the roadmap for this moment and right now we are in the midst of, of, of so many intersecting disasters and crises. Like I, I feel like it's all come to a head literally this week um, with the pandemic, with yet another killing of a, a, an unarmed black man um, in Wisconsin with these fires that are completely tearing California apart, the storms that are coming to hit the Gulf South, thousands of people in Iowa still reeling from the inland hurricane that 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 devastated communities there. Um, this is a really critical moment to, to discuss and find a pathway forward for how we can actually connect the climate crisis to economic justice and racial justice. And, and uh, I think a Green New Deal might be one of the, the, the greatest opportunities out of this moment. Uh, and of course, I'm predisposed to agree with that. And by the way, I want to let people know that the book is available today. It's also available today on shoptyt.com at 20% off during our back to class promo. So um, consider that as a place to get it nice. and um, and learn a bunch. So um, you, you pointed out that when you began the process of putting this together and doing your writing and coordinating with so many other people, we didn't know about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We also, of course, didn't know how the primary was going to go. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit about that. How, how does that influence? Obviously, it influences the path forward, but how much really? How significant of a change is this in how the strategy is gonna have to be implemented and promoted? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, look, we we endorsed Bernie Sanders in, in January of this year. I can't, I can't even believe we're in the same year still. And we endorsed him because we really felt like he was a movement candidate. Like he was the candidate that was gonna create the best political terrain within which we could fight for a Green New Deal. And it wasn't about political saviors or candidates or anything like that. It was about what are the conditions that we need to ultimately create um, and, 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 and legislate and govern and, and pass the most ambitious and just Green New Deal that's possible. We also said when we endorsed Bernie Sanders that regardless of who wins the Democratic nomination, we would support that candidate and then we would work to hold that candidate accountable to their campaign promises, but also far beyond that should they win in November. Um, and that's exactly what we plan to do with Joe Biden. Um, we've been pushing him every step of the way uh, in large part because of our activism over the last couple of years. I was asked to be a part of the Sanders Biden Unity Task Force on Climate where we were able to get Joe Biden to agree to, you know, um, 
moving from a $1.7 trillion green jobs and infrastructure plan over 10 years to a $2 trillion one over four years and investing 40% of that in environmental justice communities. We were able to move up the timeline from 2050 targets to 2035 for clean electricity. And that's because the movement has been able to forge with building political power. And then as soon as it is November 4th, you know, we're gonna continue to hold people like Joe Biden accountable to those promises um, and actually need to kind of step up the game because we're gonna have the fossil fuel industry coming for us. We're gonna have the mm-hmm. GOP coming for us. You know, the day that 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 you know Joe Biden gets elected, all of a sudden it's gonna be austerity policies and and so yep. on and so forth. And we're not, you know, they're gonna say there's no money in the bank. Um, and we've got to make sure that we, we can answer that. And we've got a movement that can answer that. And we've got insurgent candidates that can answer that as well and work collectively. Yeah, I'm glad one of the lessons I think a lot of people have learned over the past 10 years is that that is coming. And we've already seen, I forget exactly who it was, but in the past week, one of the, the people in Biden's orbit was saying, well, I don't know, these yeah, deficits are pretty rough. And yeah, and if there's something that they're probably not going to be predisposed to prioritize, it's going to be dealing with the climate crisis. So, right. you know, hopefully you're ready to get in there and, and, and shake them into the position they need to be in. Everybody, the book is Winning the Green New Deal, available today and in fact right now at shoptyt.com, available for 20% off during our back to class promo. So definitely go take a look at that. Varshini, as always, thank you for joining us. We really do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.